What's up, Jet Nation? This is Green Bean Green here on a foggy day at Casey Key on the Gulf of Mexico here in Florida. This happens to be the shark tooth fossil capital of the world. No place in the world has more shark's teeth fossils. Found a couple myself. Let's see. There's one. See that? This thing's been sitting here for thousands of years until I found it. Isn't that neat? So, but it's foggy on the beach here today, but the sun is shining through. You ready for an analogy? A metaphor? Stick around. Like I said, I promised a metaphor. A metaphor about the sun on a foggy day. You see the sun? There it is, behind me there. The sun behind me is trying really hard to peek through. So here's the metaphor. If you can't see what's out there, just like our future. <laughs> so it's hard to tell what's going to happen for the Jets. But one thing that you can sense without being able to directly see it, you can sense that the sun is right there. You can see it. You can feel it. This is an entirely different situation than the Jets have been dealing with for many years. When Mike McCagden was in charge or when Idzik was in charge, you're real hopeful, but you go into the draft. And the first pick, like Idzik's first draft, they traded Rebus. So we had two picks. We had the nine and 12, I think it was. I was actually at the Allison Chains concert in the Miami Fillmore that night, Idzik's first draft. And I remember checking my phone while watching Alice in Chains live. They're playing, you know, they're playing wood. And I'm checking my phone and I'm watching Idzik pick the always injured D Milliner and following that with another just defensive tackle. That's like what we always do. And the rest of the draft was whatever. Sheldon Richardson ended up being okay, but still wrong position, man. And uh, then the next year, best wide receiver draft in the longest time, if, if not ever. And what does he do? Takes prior a safety from Louisville. And so like, you know, and this goes on and on and on. Every year you're like, wait, why? Why are they doing that? What the hell's going on? One of the picks I did like was Jay Samaro. I did think that guy was gonna work out. Thought that was an interesting pick. I don't know what happened to him. He had a great rookie year. Just fell off a cliff. Bowles came, you know, cut him, and that was it. So the thing is with Joe Douglas is this. He's been our GM for 18 months. 18 months, guys. That's it. What has he done in that time? Going into this offseason, you can look at it. Now, every move hasn't been perfect. He's made some flubs, in my opinion. But you look at it. We got four first-round picks going into the next two years, three-thirds, four-fifths, four-sixths. We have the second most cap money in the entire league. So here's the thing, and I'm going to tell you this right now. It's a boast, it's a claim, it's a proclamation. Deshaun Watson is going to be the quarterback of the New York Jets in 2021. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but it is going to happen. And the reason for it is this. He doesn't want to be on the Houston Texans, and the Houston Texans are a bunch of morons. Look what they did. They're in the biggest hole in the NFL outside of maybe the Saints at $108 million under the, or over the cap. The Houston Texans have no first, no second, and they're $30 million over the cap when you start considering their rookies. They got legends like J.J. Watt, who they have to get rid of. He's $17 million. And they got Deshaun Watson, the only real value that they have. So they can't keep him because he's disgruntled. He's unhappy and they can't fix anything if they keep them. They can't, they can't fix anything. No picks, no money. 
known as a drum circle. So not only that, generally speaking, when a guy like that becomes available, there's going to be all kinds of competition in suitors. But here's the truth about that. 12 teams are over the cap. Four or five more are less than 5 million over the cap or under the cap. And then you have a handful more in the 10 to 15 million range under the cap. Almost the entire league is in cap trouble. Why? Because they dropped the salary cap. That's why. So not only do we have less competition monetarily, but we also have the no trade clause. So Deshaun Watson can put the kibosh on any trade. Let's say the Detroit Lions want to offer them 10 first round picks in Matthew Stafford. And Deshaun says, I don't want to go to Detroit. That's the end of that. They can't trade him there. The only places they can trade him are, tra are places that he wants to go to. So we've heard about the Jets and Miami. Do you really think that the Miami, that the Texans are going to trade their franchise quarterback to the Miami Dolphins to get their own pick back that they traded last year in the Larry Tunsil trade? What? Who would do that? They would be laughed out of the NFL. So I don't think that Miami's a realistic destination. Plus, they just hired that quarterback coach, Charlie Fry, who worked with Tua uh, in high school or whatever it was. So they signed him in particular to specifically to work with Tua Tagovailoa. So guys, that adds, that, that puts us in one position. We're one of a handful of potential options for the Houston Texans. So what that does is it takes this asinine uh, level of draft capital that everybody thinks Deshaun Watson is going to command, and it drops it because we're going to tell them, hey, here's the thing about that. We have a serious plan B and a serious plan C. Plan B me being... We have the second overall pick in the draft. We have the 23rd overall pick in the draft. We have the 34th overall pick in the draft. We have two firsts next year. We got four fifths and four sixths over the next two years. We have $80 million once we cut Henry Anderson. We, quite frankly, don't need you. Sure, we'd like to have Deshaun Watson. Sure. But if you think you're going to hold us over a barrel, fuck out of here. Ain't happening. So Deshaun Watson is going to put the, he's going to nix any trades to anywhere terrible. And any team that's not terrible is pretty much in uh, cap hell. The only real concern are the Patriots. But the Patriots aren't what they used to be. I don't know if Deshaun Watson wants to go up there. He just saw what happened to Cam Newton up there. They didn't even make the playoffs. Right? So, here's what I predict. The 23rd overall pick, a first next year, Sam Darnold, and a third. That's it. That's what they're getting. And that's even more than I think you have to pay. But I think you come in there with that, and you say, look, man, we're trying to meet you halfway. Two firsts, a third, Sam Darnold. That's what you get. They say, no way, we want four firsts or three firsts. Say, all right, well, good luck with that. And you hang up the phone and you go to plan B, which actually is plan A. Deshaun Watson's never been ours. He's not ours and he never was. We don't lose anything, you understand? This is just a potentiality. And that's what Joe Douglas has done for us, my wonderful, fine feathered Jets fans. Joe Douglas has taken a laughing stock and in a mere matter of 18 months put us in a position that one of the best quarterbacks in the league is saying that it's one of a handful of places that he would accept the trade to. And here's the other thing is all those people that were complaining about the Jamal Adams trade and all that not only does Deshaun Watson want to come to the Jets, 
we actually have the capital to get it done without hamstringing our organization for the next three or four years. We can actually sign this guy. We can trade him and sign him and not even miss a beat. Everybody's all worried about if we get to Sean Watson that it somehow ruins us. Let's let's say we do our tra my trade. A first this year, a first next year, a third this year, and Sam Darnold. Throw in a fourth next year. We still have the number two overall pick, a, a, a first next year, a second next year, and $80 million this year. Everybody's going to want to come to play for the Jets. And here's the other thing about that. Once we start winning, nobody's going to be able to make more money than Jets players. And we know that, and believe me when I tell you, Deshaun Watson knows that, and so does everybody else. Brace yourselves, Jets fans. These last kicks, these last pokes from the national media about the Jets, this Matt Miller cat, talking about some accusation that Woody Johnson, dude, that was one accusation almost a year ago that's never been corroborated. Why are you writing stuff like that now? Didn't he just sign the first and hire the first Muslim head coach in NFL history? Isn't this the third minority candidate we've hired for our head coach? Isn't Chad Alexander the, the director of player personnel a minority? We're, we're, our organization is not in question, guys. We're not perfect, but we're not in question. So he's writing shit like that. All this stuff is is the last kicks and pokes of the national media that's not going to have us to kick on anymore. They're not going to have us to beat up on, guys. And they hate it. We're the best damn franchise to pick on because we don't take shit. And they know it. They're going to miss us. And we're going to miss them. This is the beginning. The Joe Douglas era. Take that. Stick it right in your Pope. Your Pope. Stick that right in your pipe. <laughs> and smoke it. Look at my podcast this week. On Jets. On Green Bean Jets Fan YouTube. Look at my podcast. I talk about the comp pick equation. Look at how Joe Douglas is setting us up to get free picks every year. Did you guys know that the NFL actually gives teams free picks every single year for losing quality free agents? Yeah, we don't know that because we don't do that. The last guy to do that was John Idzik. We never get comp picks because we're consumers in the free agent market. Joe Douglas put a stop to that too. Not that we're not going to sign free agents. And say, you watch. It might not be this year, but it's coming. The next year or two, it's going to be more free agents being let go because our rookies are coming and taking their place than we're signing in free agency. Everybody knows that that's not the way you build a team with big free agent signings. You plug holes with free agent signings. That's what you do. So with that, I want to tell you, have a safe, happy day. Go Jets.